Close up, you need anything? You good with that radio? Okay. See you guys. See ya. See ya. Hey, what's going on, Carcass? I love how I'm just like, boom. Hey, what's going on? What's up, Christopher? Miguel? James? I was gonna say, was that James? Yeah, that was James. Wow. It's just like 40 things. What's up, John? What up, what up, what up? Yo. Hey, Puro Jalisco. Oh boy. Alright, so it's Saturday, which it means is Saturday? it's Saturday. Okay. Which means this is the Saturday live show. Car audio talk. Are you better, Dean? Are you better? Actually I feel like crap right now. I have a serious headache. But that's okay. We'll we'll figure it out. No big deal. Um Nicaragua. For those of you that didn't know, yesterday we came on, did a quick little live show, get you guys caught up to date why we had no videos this week. What's up, uh, Wayne? What's up, so Jamaica? If, you, if you're interested in that, you can go back and check it out. The podcast should be, um, that was James. What? 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 Oh, nothing. Okay. Um, what? I'm, 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 really? <laughs> oh, it's raining? Yeah, it's raining. What? Yeah, porn. Wow, it's raining outside. And he wants me to talk on the phone right right after the show starts. Uh, what's the topic of the day, guys? I don't know, it's a good, a good, really, I don't know. Um, what is a good topic of So, the day? my back hurt. Your back hurts, you yeah. poor little thing. <laughs> he picked on me all last year. I, I had back problems. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, old guy, old guy. And now this week his back's... Uh, I did something you. bad, yeah. And this week... Phoenix, yeah. Arizona, yeah. Uh, James, can I help you? Are you answering the phone, James? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Paul wanted me to do. Sound man, boom. Um, boom. So, anyways, Thank your back you has just... been bothering you all all week. All week, poor yeah. thing. Um, yeah, you know. Last weekend we had Easter here. Yeah. And uh, you and I went to Artie's house. Yep. And hung out with Artie. That was which that was really nice. Artie should be on the show Monday night, uh, yeah. which will be good. We'll talk about that more. Uh, Paul from Atlanta, what's up, buddy? Uh, R E. What is R E? You're Jim. Jim. What's wife, up, Jim? Wife goes out of town, and you. Well, actually, for weeks now, it's it's been crappy. But she had thank work you, to do. Thank so. you, thank you, Julio. Oh um, yes, yeah, Pittsburgh. Um, but yeah, so Easter was fun. Sebastian had his first Easter egg hunt. So was yeah, good. that was amazing. You know, it's really hard to believe that that was last weekend because this week has been so packed. Yes. I mean, we've been so swamped so, this week. Yeah. Yeah. And. Honestly, going home and not doing anything has been Cody. really weird. Yeah. Uh, last night, the girls went to see Cinderella, the play. Last week? And I, yesterday. The, yesterday. Jesus. And I uh, <laughs> I was trying to watch TV, and about 9 o'clock, I fell asleep. Because I was just so irritated with everything. And yeah. I uh, woke up at about midnight. They just walked in the door. Uh, I have a Pioneer 96 on without a subsonic filter, and I miss the rest of that. Okay. It hurts me really serious. Comes half mid bass punch. Of the what thumb. do I do? It has a subsonic filter. Yes. Subsonic filter. Without. What do I do? Without a subsonic filter. What did I do? Yeah. Pioneer 96 and one without a subsonic filter. What do I do? Uh, it doesn't have one. No, I, I think, I it, think it has some. I, I don't. It might not. I mean, honestly, uh, a, a subsonic filter a is a high-pass filter that blocks lower-end frequencies from getting to the subwoofer. So, for example, most subsonic filters are like 15, 20, 25, 30 high-pass filters. And what they're designed to do is all that wasted energy that's there, that's being created, that is the amplifier and the subwoofer can't reproduce, if you reduce that, then your amplifier should run more efficient. Um, not all amplifiers have them. Some amplifiers have them, they don't mention it. Mm -hmm. uh, is it an issue? Mm, no. Um, I, I wouldn't, yeah, 9601 doesn't. Okay. I, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Uh, we've done 
plenty of 9601s and they don't have an efficiency problem. They definitely don't have a power problem. No. So I, I don't I don't think it's anything you have to worry about. Right. All right. So hey guys, uh, that's Johnny. What do I need for a PA3 to meter the output of a factory amplifier? Um. Okay. Good question. I, I might have added them onto the tool car. I might not have. Uh. So. What's that, this Jason? Is, this is an XLR to RCA. This will plug into your PPA3. And then from this RCA, you can build anything you want. PA3. Yeah, that's what I Okay. So what we do is we build these, which is an RCA end to test leads that we make. Um, and from that, you can test the output of things. Now, there's also on a PA3, there's a voltage setting in the settings to where you can tell it how much voltage input you're going to have. The other thing too is I wouldn't hook up the out <laughs> 30, 40, 50 watts, 70 watts max on that output voltage. Don't be hooking it up to a subwoofer amp or anything yeah. like that. You'll blow the thing up. It's made to take nominal amounts of input, low amounts of, of wattage. You know, like when we're doing a factory system, they're only going to have 30, 40, 50 watts. It'll, it'll eat that up. Uh, it, most of the time it will say clipping if it's detecting clipping. Um, but yeah, don't up, Brad? don't put like 250 watts to it. You'll you'll destroy the thing. Yeah. But for like testing a factory system stuff like that, it works great. That's the way to go. Now they do make a XLR choke yep. that you can get. Uh, I don't personally have one because I haven't needed it, but I know they do make a choke that's like a 20 dB choke for that. That is for measuring higher um, wattages. Uh, and there again, you can get that uh, on Amazon. That's where we get those. Mm -hmm. They actually come as a set of two. It's kind of nice. Um, we had to make our first ones. Now they sell them. It's kind of cool. Hawaii in the house. Okay, so Wayne is like, hey, I've been in town in July 2 to July 9. If you're not there, what am I supposed to do? Hang out with my family? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's, um, that's... We're leaving, right? We're gone. Uh, yeah. From Saturday to Saturday. Saturday, yes. Saturday. Yeah. I'll be in Cali, California, in Cali. doing yeah. the whole touristy thing. God, I can't wait. Welcome to Cali. So if you, everybody's in Cali, go see Dean. All right. I have 2005 uh, There was caravan. a question about Millie's. Did you see that? See I'm, I'm going to. Oh, you're going to that? Okay, let me, sorry. Let me, let me my bad. It. All right, go ahead. Uh, Dodge Caravan, my FM stopped working, tried two different head units. Well, it's a Dodge Caravan, so it is going to have an amplified antenna. So on the harness, there is a blue wire that's next to the speaker wires. We talk about that when we talk about four and eight. Uh, there should be four on one side and five on the other. That fifth wire is the amplified antenna adapter. So if you're getting crappy FM, if that amplified antenna wire isn't getting 12 volts, then you that could be the reason why. Uh, what time is it in Florida? It is 6.26 here in Florida. The Mealy? You say the Mealy? Yeah, there was a Mealy question. I missed that. Um, uh, so you want to make sure that, the, um, that that is getting powered up. And if it is getting powered up, you may have blown up the actual amplified antenna receiver in the back of the car. So those are something you're going to want to check out. Uh, I'll be back in October at Disney. You guys are welcome to come. Oh, well, uh, okay. I'll, I'll be... At Disney at some time in October. Yeah. Go next weekend. <laughs> Try to go every month. All right. Um, hey guys, I have a Kenwood 9905S coming next week. Oh, cool. I will be using this in my Accor EX 2013. What do I need to retain my factory controls and replace the stock unit? I also have two 12s already. Um. So, steering wheel controls and an Acura, probably going to try the CP2. I would head over to pack, okay, pack-audio.com is the first place we go anytime we're trying to find parts for a car. If they're not available on pack-audio.com, then we go to metraonline.com. Mm -hmm. One of those two places is going to have, what's up? One of those two places is going to have the products that you need in order to do everything that's in your car. Pack first, Metra second. Yep. That's, that's one of those two sites. Um, and if you are going to do the CP2, we've talked about it, we showed it, they got the cool little app. Uh, you can download that right to your phone right now. Go to uh, the app store, doesn't matter which one, and down, go to pack audiocom and download the app for the CP2. 
and you can go on right away and check to see if the app were if what if it'll work in your car um, let me just see if I can find the logo. Hey, what's up, Julio Salazar? Um, so it's called Control Pro is yeah. the name of the app. This is it right here. So you can tap that, and you can see if it'll work in your car. And it'll give you the plug. It gives you the wiring diagram. It's a great tool, even if you're not going to use it. You can see if it'll, if a steering wheel control interface will work in your car and how to hook where you got to hook it up. So it's pretty cool. All right. Hello, Dean. And uh, I Hi. just bought a pack RP5. K RP5. Okay. Yeah, yep. GM4101. Yep. Okay. Okay. And Camaro is there a way? Or a Ford F-150. Uh, GM. Okay, it's so GM forty one or what? It's gotta be a Camaro. Okay. Uh, you think is I there a way? <laughs> I don't. Is there a way to tell if it needs to be updated before they install? <sighs> yes, there should be a sticker on it. Um, the one thing I will tell you too on those new kits, anything that is an RP five. Okay, this is. Do we still have that piece of paper? Or do we throw it away? On the RP five from this week. I probably throw it away. Probably. Okay, any RP five uh, that is of the square build. Okay, power comes in one side, power goes out the other side. They're starting to put papers in there now that they're in rotation. You're going to want to take power and ground, which is yellow and black, and loop them around the outside. So just tee them in so that you know you have your two harnesses. Run a wire from here over to this harness here on both yellow and black. What's happening is that when you're doing these navigation radios or video radios, they draw more current than can pass through the RP5. So you burn out the trace on the RP5. So you just need to solder a jumper on the outside. On the actual RP5, it will have a sticker that'll tell you what version it is. And then you can go to pack-audio.com slash updates and see what the current update is on it. Um, All right. Well, yeah. if it's, it should be up to date though. They haven't had an update in like, four or five months, so all that old inventory should be gone. All right, I asked you about the U-RAM last week. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes, So do you do. think uh, the USB splitter or Y adapter will work? So I can charge from the U-RAM and play my iPod through the USB. U-RAM reads the S9, Right. Uh, uh, but not the iPod Touch. No, you can't put a Y jack in there. It won't allow you to do that. Um, if it's reading your S9, then that's awesome. Um, no, you, you gotta you gotta do one or the other. These these things only like if it's got one RCA, Cabot, you get one on? you get one RCA. That's it. So you can't put a splitter in there because that'll that'll even add to more of the headache. Yeah. Can you tell me the easy way to install double DIN in 2002 Jeep livery? Yeah, Metro makes a kit for that. They should make a kit for that. So MetroOnline.com, they should make a uh, a kit that. Um, so a lot of those are going to have the radios that have like those little these little these little thingy wingy two knobs on the left and right side. This will come in there, and what you're going to do is you're going to trim it out just a little bigger. And then there's a bezel like this that's going to snap over the front and cover those little wingies. Or it's going to come with something like this guy here that's going to snap in and you're going to trace these out. And then you can put the radio in. There again, if you go to Metro Online, if it does make that kit, you can download the owner's manual for it. And you can check out how easy or hard it is. What we would use to do that is some form of a grinder like this. Uh, you could do it with a Dremel or anything that, uh, and always do it from the back side, not on the top because it's usually got some form of funky silver coating and you don't want to scratch it. Something so always go from the back side. All right, I replaced my stereo in my 2001 E46. That's a BMW. DM801 or Rockford 360. DM801. Okay. Yeah, go if ahead. you want to know more about the DM801. Don't we all? In one ten. Uh, okay. I'm replacing my stereo in 2001 E46. That's a BMW. Yep. Serious. Yep. Um, which has the Versity antenna. Yep. And it has two connections. Yes. One for the antenna and another one with a small gold connector. Is this just a 12 volt for the antenna amplifier? No. If it's got the amplifying antenna, the amplifier. Uh, okay. So how G, how the Germans do the Metro? Thank you for the Liberty. There it is. It's the Jason 95, Jason. 65, 24B. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, thank you, Jay. That'll be, that'll be the kit we just talked about. All right. So how the, the German diversified or amplified antenna works is it, it instead of having an exterior blue wire, they put the 
power for it down the center. Okay, bad, bad visual. But they put the power for it down the center of the antenna. So when you get that amplified antenna adapter, you, Dante. it's a relay inside of that tube that is switching it from the signal ground to pass positive down it to turn on the amplifier in the back. Um, that's how that's done. So if there's an extra connector on there, it has nothing to do with that. All right. Uh, hi, Joshua. Uh, 2016 Subaru Legacy. Can I keep my factory camera, Sirius XM, and nav antenna, also USB and AUX? Off the top of my head, yes, you can keep all those. How easy that's going to be? Mm, might not be too easy. Right now, when it comes to retaining the factory backup cameras, most factory backup cameras use a 6 volt. Uh, Believe it or not, Metro's finally starting to make a bunch, but also uh, Skosh. Skosh makes a bunch of camera, factory camera retention harnesses. That's where we go first when we're trying to find something for a fact. We go to Skosh, then we go Metro Pack. They suck for that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way, which is just probing wires. What's up, Jeff? Uh, Jeff? You're going to need. Hey, Jeff. Oh, hey, what's up, Jeff? Um, hey, Jeff. Hey, hey, hey. hey anyways, up, Jeff? anyway. Hey, 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 what's going on? Um, Anyways, if you need that, you're going you're gonna to need a 6-volt power supply because it's 6-volt. As far as retaining the aux jack, some of those that are camera interfaces have all that stuff. Otherwise, we've had plenty of videos where we show you how to retain the factory aux back, jack. Um, all of it can be retained to some regard, So, but it's going to be... We know we suck at that. I know. I know you know. It's okay. Um, and we know why. Um, but it's getting better. T harnesses came out this week. Actually, just sent some guy from the last show for that. Anyways, so yeah, a lot of the times what we get into is that some of these cars they just don't make the harnesses, and we have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is just get in there with tools and figure this stuff out. Um, if that just depends on your level of ability to do that. All right. But those three sites that we've covered so far twice, and then uh, Skosh. That, that com are going to have if the parts are available they're going to be on one of those three sites if they're not available old fashioned all right okay, sorry go ahead <laughs> i have an app for my subs and another one for my mids and highs uh when i played the subs really loud the vocals amplifier cut off yes it's a voltage wow. problem it's a voltage issue the bigger amp is always going to assume the most power so what you know what's happening is your, the other amp is starving because the bigger amp is, is overpowering it. Um, certain things that can cause that is low battery, that, low battery voltage, bad grounds. Um, what you're going to want to do is take a digital multimeter and try to diagnose what the problem is. To do that, there's a multimeter set to DC back at the amplifier. See what kind of amp, see what kind of voltage the highs amp sees when that sub amp is really banging. Uh, if it's down low, then you're going to want to figure out why. And that could be there again. It could just be like uh, installation error, or you just need more juice, bigger batteries. All right. Uh, what do you think they deleting deleting uh, the HDMI ports for the new radios? Uh, because they want to piss us off. I mean, let's be <laughs> honest. Um, That's it. You know, we were just That's having the reason. This, we were just having this conversation. All right, this radio is awesome. Ninety nine zero five. Great best screen resolution of in and there's no hdmi input to take advantage of that are you kidding me why i don't know Quadrayanes. um not only that but kenwood's even doing away with the aux jack on a lot of their radios they they're just doing away with aux jack all together so you know the cheaper pioneers like the, the the 23 24 13 all those that's a price thing that's just straight up price point they don't want to pay the extra money to have uh whatever royalties it costs with hdmi that's just strictly price when the new a AVIX and whatever the replacement for the 4200 is come out in a couple months, we'll know. Is it is it's just something everyone's going to, or is it Kenwood just being weird? Alpine still has HDMI. That's even one of their model numbers is called the HDMI, just to make it a, you know, screw you guys, we have HDMI. Not only that, a 207 has an input and an output HDMI, which is like, yay! Because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to pass HDMI to my rear screen. Now, the 309 doesn't, which was like, come on, guys. <laughs> so, but it has an HDMI input. So if you want the big cool screen in your dash, you can get an HDMI input on it. But for some reason, this guy here, no HDMI. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Pioneer radios are like double-dean radios. Uh, read USB 
video, yeah, uh, audio and pictures, yes, only with the new software. Uh, will they or do they? Do they? Do they? Yeah, they do read them. Do they suck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the problem is you have to you remember it's a 480 by 800 screen, so it's it's really low res. So you have to really down res the image to get it to play on the screen. It's typically going to look crappy, and that's why, in, like on those, we always try to go in through using the iData. I'm sorry, using the MediaLinks cable, the iSimple MediaLinks cable, because at least that starts out at 720 and then down reses through to 480 through the RCA jack. Um, so at least it's a better image. Uh, but when you have to do USB, it, it, it comes down to it's a speed thing. Just like all these new radios when they say this right here, YouTube. Okay. Uh, if you haven't had the joy of trying to watch YouTube on one of these, oh my God, it's terrible. You got to turn the volume down. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, it's terrible. It's glitchy. It's like, it, it sucks. So I don't know. But uh, yes, John. you can. Yes. John, have you guys had a chance to look at the new most talk about subwoofer? The Rockville okay. <laughs> No! <laughs> Although, you know, it's like we got a bunch of new stuff in. Like, we just became Morel dealers. Yeah. Uh, so that all showed up last week or this week. I don't remember. It last showed week. up. Last Was week. it last week? Yeah. I honestly have... I went over to grab this yesterday because Paul told me they came in and I wanted to put it in my car uh, to play with it. And I was like, all oh, the Morel stuff's here. I haven't even, it's like, we got the amps, we got tons of speakers. I mean, we got, I ordered a ton of Morel crap. And I haven't had time to look at any of it. And I've been like dying to get Morel in here for like the last three months. That was four, but the last three months. Finally came in. It's just right now, we just so sucks. Yeah. All right. I have a 2018 Sierra with both system. Any idea where the bays roll off? Um, is it what? A Sierra? Yeah. Oh. With Bose system, any, no. You know, the problem with any Toyota is that, uh, yes, you're going to have base roll off. Uh, you're going to have high pass roll. There's a lot of things that go on in a Toyota system that is just a nightmare. And Toyota's been doing it for years now. Um, but no, I have no idea where the base roll off is at. Anytime you have a Toyota, if you can replace the radio, replace the radio. Do yourself a favor, it will sound so much better. Um, I know that's not in everyone's idea of what they want to do, but it's like so bad, so bad. Yeah. And Jeff, thank you for chiming in and helping out, buddy. That's that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, Jeff is, uh, Mr. Smith is, is Jeff, the guy that was in the Facebook Live show that works for PAC, so. Uh, and that also also helping out today is Jason. Jason. Uh, as you guys see in there, there is Fro. Uh, Stereo Kings, if you guys are interested, want to see some other videos on YouTube, they have a channel, Stereo Kings, uh, on YouTube. Um, James was on here a little bit a while ago, which is uh, James, as you know, from Car Audio, etc. Et uh, over there in the New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, if you if you get a reply back from Fro's house, he knows what he's talking about. Just go ahead, and we can't answer all the questions, so yep. he helps out when he can. Thank you very much. All right. Go ahead. Hey, guys, I have a Kenwood DDX 773BH. I st it started cutting off. 773. Yes. Okay. That's a uh, Kenwood? Yeah, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, do you think it's worth to fix it, or just get rid of it and get a new one? The deep dark secret of anything that's electronics is you have a three year life cycle, okay? These manufacturers want these radios to last three years, okay? Sucks, I know, especially, you know, but you gotta remember, um, yeah, even if you buy the thousand dollar one, three years. Uh, $500 one, $300 one, they all change. Every year they come out with new products. So if your light radio lasts 10 years, you're never gonna buy that new product. Should you get something fixed? No. Is it worth getting fixed? It's definitely not worth getting something fixed. If it's in the warranty period, like Exelon, Kenwood offers the Exelon radios a two-year warranty. Um, we send very few radios back ever. I mean, it's like a handful of every year. It's not many. They, they do last a pretty long time. But with that being said, that's why we always push the Exelon is because you do get a two-year warranty. But would I repair an older radio? Is that done? No, I would not. I would just move on to the next the next radio which would be the 795 which is really cool all right uh, we just did a review on it by the way yeah. rob say hey hi from chicago hey dean i put the stuff on my beetle twitter mitts and 
the front coaxials and the rears, and the LC61200. Why oh, wow. did okay. the audio control tell me to buy two ohm sub and wire the four ohm? Mono. I'm assuming mono is what you mean on channels like five and six. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you don't have. Okay, so here. It, that, okay, it comes out of tricky ohm load. Um, real quick, before I answer that, do you guys have any videos on the DM810? We do not have them on the DM810, we have them on the 608. Uh, same piece, just a couple more channels. Um, there's yep. a couple of videos like uh, we have a Camaro video that we did that we yep. talk about that spend some time on it and I know there's another one but I can't remember what it is now so to keep things easy one of the things that everyone always asks is how do I bridge an amplifier how do I bridge an amplifier can I bridge an amplifier do I get more power when I bridge an amplifier can I bridge the amplifier if I bridge the amplifier I get more power right so to, to avoid any headaches there if you just tell somebody hey if you hook it up 4 ohm at the amplifier you're going you're gonna to bridge it and get the most power out of it it's the exact same power as 2-ohm stereo. So if you do 2-ohm stereo or 4-ohm mono, same thing. Um, they might have said that just to make everyone's life a little bit easier and you know, run it at 4-ohm mono so that you would think you're getting more power out of it because that way they don't have to have someone that runs it at like 2-ohm mono and blows the amplifier up. Um, but that's just a guess. Um, so thank you, Brian. That's my thought on that. All okay. Right. What do you got? All right, hey guys, I've been trying to reprogram. Okay. Reprogramming the ANC in a Ford vehicle with Sony Premium Sound oh, yeah, System yeah, 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 yeah. to turn off processing. Yeah, yeah. And change from high level to four yeah. ball low level. Yeah. Yep. Is it is it, is it I worked? Heard, I heard you can remove the stock amp. Um, I think I think Jeff has been talking to him in the comments okay. on that one. Um, I have a 2015, no Sony, but put K's, uh, six mine components in front, six and a half. Listen to country, old school rock, going, put a five champ, looking for subs under the seat, tens or twelves, brands and recommendations. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, good question. If you like a lot of bass, there's a company called Foxbox. Oh, yeah. Foxbox makes a awesome box for an F-150. Yeah. You could fit two P3 Rockford. It's a ported box. It's a ported box. You could fit two P310s or two Type R10s in a ported box underneath the seat of your F150 in a Fox box. Yep. Strongly, strongly recommend it. Yes. If you don't want to go that way because you look at that and go, whoo. Um, I mean, you could check bad. out the A Trend box and then possibly go with two of the Kicker Comp RT12s. That's also very nice. Personally, Fox Box, way to go. Way to go. Uh, we just did two of them in a uh, Ford Raptor, 2018 Ford Raptor, off of a um, audio control, one of the last, the few, the remaining uh, Epicenter Epicenter 600s. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask when I put on the, the post on Instagram, you're like, oh, where are they going? What's happening? They're just doing away with the Epicenter amplifiers altogether because they're they, that added expense to the amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think what they figured out is that the amplifier just came in at too big of a price point for a new amplifier line. Um, yeah, so five and six are only four ohm mono stable. Yeah, so that's yeah. what, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so, what the, I think what talking with them, the just I got out of is that they, they wanted to come out with amplifiers that were more readily available, not a learning curve. So, they came out with the 1.800, and they're also coming out with like a 1.1600. A yeah. um, little bit more affordable, a lot more power. Um, but for this, I really wanted the epicenter because he's an old school guy going back to Cali is his favorite song. I wanted to make sure he had a ton of just. All right. Uh, I remember Dean mentioned the pack was eventually coming out with a T harness for the four. Yes, it's yeah. out. And it's out. It just shipped. We got yeah. them in yesterday. Yesterday. And we just shipped one out yesterday yeah. after the live show. Morel, um, Morel have any six by nine components better than the Alpine six and a half, six by nine components. Well, Alpine now has two 6x9 components. They have the X-Type 6x9 components, and they have the S-Type 6x9 components. And we did get, finally, which was great, we got to do a set of the S-Type components. What did we put those in? Do you remember? Uh, the S-Types in the Jeep. Was it the, was it a, no. Yeah. It was the 6x9s. Was it a Jeep? It was oh, no, that was, that was the, yeah. It was the F1, F250. It was the F250 off of a brick amp. 
Yeah. Yeah, because with the Alpine, because we used a 455U to power those, and we did S-Type all the way around. Mm -hmm. No sub. No sub. It, man, that was impressive. That was really good, yeah. That was impressive. As far as the Morel was 6 by 9s I thought they did. I don't know. I ordered, like I said, I ordered a ton of stuff. Um, and I honestly don't remember what I ordered. So I, it, more than likely they don't, but they may. Don't I, I don't know. I'd have to check. Okay, what is your opinion on the Kicker C ZR 600 amp? Let's see, wait a minute. Going back to Cali or Biggie or LL Cool J. Um, I'm going to go LL Cool J all day long. I mean, I like Biggie, like Biggie, 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 but I like LL, man. I got rocked the Bell. I got the whole, I got greatest hits, man. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I'm all sorry. Right. That's fine. Uh, kicker. ZR, 600 amp, the white ones, remember? Mm hmm What about What do you think? It's a good amp. Yeah. We put it on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kicker, okay, Kicker makes great stuff. People either love Kicker or they hate P Kicker. Just like people either love Rockford or they hate Rockford, they love JL, they hate JL. Kicker has always made great products. Kicker is owned by a dude that still listens to every product. It's the same guy has owned it this whole time. He's an awesome dude. I finally got the opportunity to meet him. I think I've talked about it here before. The guy is the coolest guy ever, and he still listens to every product that comes out of there. He still makes sure that every amplifier, if it's a thousand watt amp, will do a thousand watts. Mm -hmm. However, whatever it is, you know, whether it's a CX, a DX. Uh, uh, XR or whatever the, the, the other one is and so yeah it's great product people get all pissy because they went into Walmart and they sell it there and uh, apparently you can't buy things from Walmart uh, yeah you know so whatever all right hey guys from Alabama how hard is to add an amplifier and subs to a Cadillac CTS and bypass the factory Bosan Huh. Well, you can't bypass the factory Bose amp unless you're going to put a new radio in it. You have to keep the Bose amp in. Uh, right now, that's just what you got to do. I don't know if that car is going to be on the list of cars that are going to be compatible with the new <coughs> Most 50 adapter that PAX is coming out with. If you want to check, um, Nav TV also makes a Most 50 adapter. You can see if your car makes the list. If it does, theirs is really expensive. Uh, really expensive. Uh, expensive. Companies have to companies eat too. Have to eat. Well, hashtag Walmart crowd. <laughs> Jeff, right? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, if you know the CTS Metro makes a kit, uh, we've used it a couple times now, and yeah. we've, we've been successful both times, which is is great. Yeah. Uh, so keeping that factory radio, I mean, if you got the one with the screen that pops out and all that, I get it. But you're still gonna have to go after the amplifier right now. Um, so is it hard? No, I mean it's it's what it is, you know. All right, we've done it. Yeah, can I use four gauge wire to power two amplifiers? One is a thousand watts, and the other one is a two thousand watts mono amplifier. Nav TV's most fifty interface. That's the model number. Thanks, Jeff. So it is called the Nav TV GM six fifty most interface. So with the Cadillac, you'd want to check and see if that interface plugs into it. Be ready for sticker shock because it's expensive, but it, it'll get you a full preamp section output out of that factory radio. Yeah. Um, Amp will have theirs available, which Jeff's not going to confirm nor deny here in a couple months, which will be cheaper. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. They have the controls for that. Oh no. Okay. Uh, I say, can I run one four gauge to power two amplifiers, a thousand watts and a two thousand watts? No, no. You could run one zero gauge, but and no, then, not not. You'd want to run either two four gauge or one zero gauge. All right. You could uh, answer that, man. Yeah, all right, man. Why didn't you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So hello from Madrid, Spain. Hope you guys are well. I want to run a pair of Alpine SPR 50C. Okay. Okay. Speakers. Components. Yes. Yep. Active. Yep. Uh, from the Alpine PDX V9, but I can find any info on the crossover point. Yep. And you're not any going help? to. Uh, and if you call <laughs> Alpine, they're going to tell you why do you want to do that? Really? Why? Why? Why do you want to do that? That's that makes no sense. Don't don't do that. Um, and I'm going to agree with them on that. Honestly, yes. You could go network mode. You're going to want to start the tweeter crossover up super high. Uh, but Alpine doesn't recommend doing it. Um, I don't know why. The amplifier is capable of it. 
we called them on it because we we're like, hey, we want to do this. And they're like, why? And we're like, what do you mean why? You built the amplifier to run that way. And they're like, uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, you're just going to want to start with the crossover points high on those tweeters, real high, and then gradually work your way down. Uh, keep the gains all the way down. All the way down. See you, Julio. All so, right. There you go. Yep. There we go. Six by nine Morel tempos. Yeah, tempos Ultra are good. That's what we put in the other car. Really? Um, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, hey, guys. Okay. Love the channel. My question is, my girlfriend has a 2004 Impala. The stereo right. works, but I have to turn the bottom all the way up to hurt anything. What will be the problem? The factory amp or the radio? Um, all right, hold on. Uh, hey, fellas, for Philly, found the wiring harness for my CX790 4200X. Well, so, okay, so there's different wires for the CX, CX90. There are smart harnesses now that are available for them. If you're getting a smart harness, I mean, it's got a brain box on it for your, for your Volvo. See you, they, Jeff. Thank then, you. Thanks, Jeff. Then you shouldn't have to do anything like we did in our video. Uh, at the time when we shot our video, the customer wasn't willing to spend the 150 bucks on the smart harness to do it. So, which a lot of people don't do it, you know, they don't want to spend that on that car because it's a little bit older. Um, but if you buy the actual smart harness for the CX-90, everything should be done behind the radio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, go back to the best amp for two 6x9 component kickers. We'll get the kicker 300 by uh, three, the four channel. Yep. The four point something or other. CX All right. or DX, I don't know. Okay. So, All 2004 right. Impala. 2004 Impala. Yeah, the radio works, but right. not really because they have to turn it all the way up okay. to hurt anything. Okay. What do you think it is? Is the amp or the radio? So, that 2004, 2005, 2006 era of GM, they made the crappiest speakers on the face of the earth. I mean, literally the crappiest speakers ever. We've had cars that have, at the beginning of the day, left their house and they played. At the end of the day, they were all blown. Guy brings them in and there's like nothing left on it. And like, I don't know what happened. And I think the radio's dead. And it's like, no, it's the speaker. Anytime we get a car like that in, we automatically check the speaker first. Uh, just because we, in our experience, we found that the speakers go bad. The next on that list is going to be the amplifier followed by the radio. We've had both of them go bad. If you're going to do the radio, bypass the amplifier. Always bypass the amplifier. Did I mention always bypass the amplifier? Take the factory amplifier out. You don't want to keep it. And then just do four new speakers. But check the speakers first. All right. Can a factory Cadillac CTS amp push to 12s? No. 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 That's not designed to do that. Have you guys have any video on bypassing the amplifier on the Acura 2005? No, we don't have like a specific video on how like that particular car. I mean, we, we've had videos where we show you how to bypass the factory amplifier, um, but it's not that specific car. Um, at the end of the day, it's all very similar. You've, you know, you've find out your outputs, you find out your inputs and you, you loop them together or run new wires. Um, all right, what do I need to add subwoofers into uh, 2013 Tacoma JBL? Keep the factory head unit. What does he want to do? Add subwoofers. Add subwoofers yes. to it? Yeah. What LP year? LP72. What year? Uh, 2013. 2013. Yeah. Um, yeah, she could use an LP72 or if it has the JBL system. It has uh, the JBL system. Might want to check pack first. Go to pack-audio.com, type in your make, model, and year. Uh, they do make an Amp Pro for Toyota now. I don't know if that car is part of it. If they do, you definitely want to get the Amp Pro. Uh, that'll eliminate all the crappy BS that the JBL system does and also allow you to eventually replace all the mids and highs. So if they don't make that smart harness for your car, they may, well, they will eventually, but then just get an LP72. Make sure you tap into the factory subwoofer, though. That's key. And only tap into one of them. Don't tap into both of them. Um, it's not necessary. All you right. You do bad things. Have you ever done steering wheel controls on the first generation Volvo XC90? I no. can't find anything. No, I haven't. Nobody does. Uh, uh, I mean, there again, you could check pack. Uh, you know, um, the access piece probably will. Apparently, they work with everything. Whether it'll work or not is entirely up to you. What are your thoughts on Infinity Kappas? Yeah, I, if it's the four ohm Kappa, they're cool, they're nice, they sound good. Um, you know, the problem with Infinity and JBL and all that is they're primarily internet brands, so, um, and they're nostalgic. Like, it, they were great back in the day. It's not to say they aren't great now. Um, there's just so much other stuff out to get that I just, 
I don't know, you know, because you got Flo Cal, you got Hertz, you got Audison, you got Morel, uh, you got Hybrid, um, hell, even the JL C5 stuff or C3, well, not C3, but the other stuff. And then, you know, the, the Exelon, gosh, you know, there's so many other speakers out there that are just like, yeah. All right, so what's Pioneer bring? Uh, so replacement or uh, the upgrade for a 4200 NEX? A couple months. We're looking at a couple months. We, they're keeping it hush hush like they did on everything else. Amp Pro or DSR1 on a 2012 Challenger really comes down to what you want to do. Uh, if you want equalization and all that fun stuff that goes along with it and you're comfortable with adjusting it, go with the DSR1. If you just want to add amps and, and keep it simple and maybe add any processor you want, uh, go with the Amp Pro. You know, the, the limitations with the DSR-1, there's limitations with any, any product you decide to go with. So, like, if you go with the DSR-1, you're stuck with the DSR-1, meaning you, you can't, like, all of a sudden wake up two weeks from now and be like, man, I really want to adjust this. Well, the DSR-1 doesn't give you that ability. What do you do at that point? You, you sell it all? Who's going to want it? Um, if you get an Amp Pro, it's just a preamp section output. If you wake up and you want, you, you can plug a DSR-1 into an Amp Pro through the RCAs, just in case. Um, a lot of people, you know, they, they'll do that. Uh, and that way, if you decide, let's say you want a, a, a Focal, an Audison, a, an audio control, or anything like that one day, you can switch it out easily. So there's something to be said for going either way. All right, I have a 2017 Jeep JK. Has a factory radio, has a sound ordinance, yep. eight inch power sub, and get a feedback. Hum. Yep. From a second when the door is shut, ground and power are good. Yes. So a speaker gets sound from a rear speaker. Yeah. So what you get is a negative feedback loop. Um, that happens. Uh, you need okay. It's not a ground issue. It's just the fact that the when the the, the speakers are staying on or when they go off, they go to a negative. Um, what's the noise filter I'm thinking of? Uh, SNI1. SNI1. Mm -hmm. Try picking up a Pack Audio SNI1 and plug it into the uh, between the uh, line level. Sure. Plug it in at the amplifier. It's an RCA ground loop isolator. A lot of the times that'll fix the issue. Um, that's what we run into. A lot of times you get that in Volkswagens and stuff like that. Uh, it, or or oh, um, yeah. if you go ahead, like if you're using like an LP72 or some product that generates a remote turn on. It's because the remote turn on is staying on and that's what's giving you that noise. If you just take the amp to an actual accessory power in there, which isn't going to be easy, you might be able to find it at the cigarette lighter, uh, that could also fix it too. All right, so, okay, this is just, okay, can I mail you an amp and have you guys wire up uh, <laughs> and, build an, and build a mount? My daughter is a huge fan of the show and wants an amp. So, um. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, of course, we could do that. The, the problem was, obviously, we'd have to figure out all the logistics on the phone, make sure that we know what kind of car it's going in, yeah. how big the panel. He said how, we can give it. Yeah, so if you give everything. Paul a call, yep. we could figure all that out. It wouldn't be, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we could, yeah, we could just, work just that. Just give a Paul a call, and we figure it we'll out. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 2016 1.5 Malibu. I just bought the Axis G... Yep. You must learn yep. ever used it before. Yep. Try to retain much uh, factory as possible while adding aftermarket amps. Does it work for you? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a high level, low level right now. I don't think it's most 50 supported yet, so. Okay. Yeah. Before we take any more questions, real quick, uh, don't forget uh, yep. the 50th uh, subscriber anniversary, whatever the heck you want to call it, is still going on. It goes on till Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, so for all you guys that haven't signed up for that or just totally missed that one or oops, uh, we have seven giveaways that we're doing. Um, we're giving away that scope that we reviewed last year. We're giving away five of these guys here. Five of these, these guys here, these cool little pack toy tools yep and we're giving away a pioneer radio uh we bought all the stuff no one is a supporter of any of that so but if you go check out the video it's up until monday uh it's it's here in the youtube there's a youtube you know youtube isn't supporting it's just where the video is you gotta be real careful about this but anyways you have until monday to enter that and then we'll be contacting whoever the seven winners are
So awesome there. All right, back to the next question. All right, hello from uh, California. Have you guys heard any difference between the 2330 <laughs> you guys and the 2440? <laughs> you guys seen any of the new dual $20 single DIN radios? Sadly, uh, we had a double DIN version of it in last week, this week, this week. Guy had, what is it, an a ES300, ES350? So. Yeah. Guy had an ES350, had a dual double DIN in there. He cut the harness. Yeah. Um, shoved it into the dash, and of course, hey, didn't work. Um, brought it into us, and I, I, he needed three new harnesses because we had to solder new harnesses in. We had to bypass the amplifier. Yeah, that's um, crazy. He spent way more having us fix this nightmare than that radio was worth, but he didn't care. And he had no dash kit. He had no nothing. But, you know, it's funny. You, you have a $20 radio, and it, it's gonna you cost spend you like three hundred dollars for the installation. Yeah, and parts. it's like last so. week or the last last week's videos when we had the um, we had the one fifty MP and the guy wanted it in his Volkswagen. It's like it's an eighty nine dollar radio <laughs> and you have two hundred dollars worth of parts. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of stripes. You know, ten dollar pairs of shoes with twenty dollars shine. Okay, go on. So like like you say, uh, difference between the twenty three thirty NEX and the twenty four forty NEX. Just the new twenty-three. Uh, that number right there, the three and the four, they're identical radios. Um, they're they're just it's just a Pioneer. Pioneer's radios keep a shelf life of three years, uh, but to keep products new, internet, blah blah blah, they just put a new number in there. Uh, sometimes they do incremental like uh, software updates uh, or What's should I say hardware that? updates. Uh, but those radios were brand new. There's really nothing that they did to those radios to make them any better than the previous model. They just sold out of all the old ones, so it was, which was weird. They said they sold out, and then we had a bunch of them come in, so bizarre. Uh, but no, there's no difference. So if you got a 2330, keep it. It's okay. You don't need to change it out for a 2440. You're not going to get any features that you don't, you know, nothing. All right. Any advice on adding front and rear cameras on a 2011 Camaro? Um, Cam 1. Is it, I think it was it the Cam 1? Ah, no, I don't even remember what it was. You know, uh, Echo Master makes a really nice, they make these side mirror cameras, and then they make a version of it for the front of the car. Uh, and I think, I want to say it's a Cam 01. Um, I could be, it's got to be wrong, because that just seems like the other camera that they make. Um, it's a cool little fisheye. Thank you, it'll, Derek. It'll fit up underneath the bumper. Looks really nice. Uh, as far as the rear goes, you know, tag cam. Tag cams are great back there. All right, what are your thoughts about replacing the factory sub on a 2005 Ford Explorer? Is it worth it? 2005? Yeah, 2005. I mean, you're not going to get much more out of it. It's, I mean, if I would just do away with the factory Columbus, sub and add, Ohio. add like a downfiring 10 or 12 back there if you need cargo space. Like if you got to keep your cargo space, don't be afraid to get like a Pioneer makes the 10 and 12 downfire boxes. Those things are awesome. They put out a ton of base. Um, and the guy uh, says, are IdataLink Maestro's good? Haven't heard you guys mention mention it in the wiring. Um, yeah, um, we use a lot of IData. Uh, you know, the things that irritate me, uh, there's, there's always something that irritates me. And when I get irritated, I don't talk about it too much until I can figure out how to not let it irritate me. Um, anything IData is great uh, if it works when you plug it in the first time. Okay, if, it, if you plug it, if you flashed it and you plug it in and it works, you're, you're awesome. You're never going to have a problem with it. It's going to work forever. Getting to that point sometimes can just really drive you crazy. Uh, you know, we had an issue two weeks ago where we were putting in a guy's 8,000 and it had been back for repair because it was an 8,000. It's four years old. We had no idea. We put in the serial number. We put the thing in. We couldn't get it to work. We're like screwing around with this thing, trying to flash the module. I call it by data. And very helpful. I data guys, I'll give them this. They're technicians. They're the guys that answer the phone and help you out. They're on point, man. Those guys are amazing. They do a great job. The guy was like, do this for me. Um, tell me the serial number on the bottom of the radio. And I told him, he goes, that's the problem. Because they can actually dial in and see the flash that you flashed it to, which is really cool. I mean, it takes tech support to a whole other level because they know what you did right there on their screen. They're looking at it. And he goes, that serial number doesn't match the serial number. Go to the about section of the radio. And I did. And he goes, Okay, so this is the serial number you need to enter. So I was like, oh, okay. So he's like, yeah, the radio's probably had a core exchange. No problem. Went back, reflashed it to the new, to the serial number that was in the about section of the radio. Boom, worked awesome. 
things like that they just take time and they're irritating <laughs> so you know if you're in a bad mood then you don't want to talk about that brand <laughs> okay for edison ramos yeah just give paul a call and he can put you in the schedule and do the install i'm doing an install while watching this awesome. it works that's nice <laughs> yeah so like i said if you can get that if you turn it on and it does the light things it's like bam you go and you check and your doors are open you're like yeah cool if it doesn't do that you're like God, i gotta walk over and flash this thing again so oh, why is watching the other thing too I like about Maestro is that they do their their harnesses are really nice. They they do a really nice job of making their harnesses make sense, and so I, I do like that. I, that's you know we're still gonna cut them apart and redo them, but at least it's not like I have to solder ten thousand different wires in the locations to make it make my kind of sense. Hello so. from Australia. What's going on? Uh, let's see, get him back into the... Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, I only use iData. So there you go. You know, I ordered the Honor Hood Light at Dean. Oh, thank you, Jason. They're going nice. to love them. Did you get the... You got the LED, I hope. And they do make them cordless now. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, they make a giant cordless one, which we showed here before. It's like... That's nice. It's really crazy. But Take it out, boom. They only last like two or hour. four hours. Hour, hour, hour and, and a hour? half. Yeah. Hour and a half to us. Um, what time is it? All right, so we got like five more minutes. Let's hit this up. What dash kit manufacturer you guys prefer to work with? with? Yeah. Best kits. At the end of the yeah. day, how this is how it goes. Yeah. Uh, we go to best, uh, best kits, which is now pack audio, pack-audio.com. If they have the kit, that's the one we're going to use because it's going to fit and look sexy. Um, if they don't have it, we're going to go to metroonline.com. Uh, the fit is going to be a little off. The color will be good. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they do make better kits. Most of the time they don't. Yep. Uh, I opted for the wired one. Good job. Um, which is better. You'll get a lot more life out of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, if neither one of those kit manufacturers have them, then we're going to go to Skosh. Then we're going to go to Connects 2. Then we're going to go to uh, Spiral. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to go to any one of an other half dozen crazy obscure websites that sell dash kits that we buy from and that's how that goes um all right where you guys get the yellow tiny connectors uh we get those from amp of america or i'm sorry amp global amp which global. is the same company that makes yeah, it's pack uh if you need those because a lot of people ask them there's no other third party source i've been able to find but more than likely, you have a car stereo dealer in your area. If you go to them, if they sell pack products of any kind, they should be able to buy them for you. All right, ready? Everyone write this down. The model number is the C-O-N-B-C-S. And for those of you that have no idea what we're talking about, these are the little tiny connectors right here that we put over the ends of wires when we don't need to cap them off. In comparison, do I have any red buff connectors? Yes, it's on the other way, yeah, on the top. I really don't use these things all that much anymore. Um, so here, wasting time, I'm sorry. Yep. So here is a red buck connector, and here is that cool yellow buck connector. So as you can see, if you got to cap off a bunch of wires, this guy here is about the size of the wire, so it does a really nice job. But those are the model numbers. So anyways, if you go to a, a pack dealer or a Stinger dealer or an Echo Master dealer or somebody that sells Phoenix Gold, all those guys should be able to call up their guy and order you a bag of those. They come in a bag of 100. But you can contact um, Global. That's it. You have to be a retailer, though. Huh. If you're a retailer. Do you have a list of these vendors? No. Um, Those, they are available on Amazon. <laughs> have them on my wish list. Oh, well, shit. If you do, send me a link. I'll, I'll repost it. I, I haven't been able to find them, but I'll have to look again. Okay, cool. Okay, harness do you recommend for a F-150 2015? No Sony system. Five channel lamp. Uh, where are they? Not that one. You organize these. I did. It's all the way in the corner. Uh, oh, here it is. It is a Car AV. Car AV. 12 240. 
There you go. You can buy it on uh, Amazon. It takes about a week to get to you. Car um, AV. They're about $17. If you're in a hurry, like some of you are, I totally understand. Uh, Metra also makes one. It's about double the money. Uh, it's made to plug into their DSP, but you can, of course, not do that and just plug anything else you want into it. Uh, but they make theirs about 35 bucks. So, hey, Chris. Uh, see you, Jason. Thanks you, so Jason. much for helping tonight, buddy. Yep. You have a good and safe weekend. Uh, Chris, probably you can give me a Paul call, and probably he can ship you a connector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, anything, if you guys are willing to wait, Paul will ship you anything. He's, oh, yeah. he's, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, he'll send you whatever you want. If you want that harness, you can order it from us, too. Paul, yep. it, it'll be more than it is on Amazon, I'll tell you right now. But just... That's, you know, Make sure you have your credit card ready. Because, <laughs> you know, we pay retail on Amazon, but yeah. it's still cheaper than the Metro piece, so that's why I buy it. It's a nice piece. Yep. All right, guys. With that, we're going to call it a night. Thank you guys so much. Jason keeps saying, see you Monday. That's right. So if you guys don't know, we do a Facebook Live show every yes. Monday night at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. It's very similar to this show, a little bit slower paced. We answer questions. This week, I believe we're going to have a special guest, Artie from Amp of America. Mm -hmm. uh, he is our outside sales guy, which means we call him. He's the guy that sends yep. us all his stuff. He's been doing this for a really, really long time. He started out as in a, in a shop. He's owned a shop. He's been, a, he's been an EMT. You know he was an EMT? No. I yeah, he was an EMT. He saves lives. Um, he's done a lot of things. It should be a really interesting interview. There again, we're continuing on with very, trying very to... Very, very good friend of you. Very yeah. good friend of mine. Uh, trying to continue on to show you guys there's more than just installers and sales guys. Yeah. Expand. Yeah. Uh, if you guys need shirt, teespring slash store slash five-star car stereo. That'll yeah. take you to the shirts. Um, if, you need, drawer. if you need... Yeah stuff tools and stuff like that uh dnftooldrawer.com we're trying to update it as fast as we can yep next week we should be thanks james next week we should be back to our regular schedule as long as i can edit and not fall on my face yep. uh so cool there um what am i missing oh patreon if you patreon? guys want to support yep. we are patreon you guys can throw us a couple bucks there if you want no if big you pressure want. uh you guys have a wonderful weekend it's saturday night See you guys monday don't go forget. out and have lots of fun if you're on the other coast yes cody thank you so much yep. he is a supporter on patreon yep. um if you're over there in cali you still got lots of time so or over there we're, we're jason anyways you guys have a great night as always we'll see you later bye, bye.